Shalom. I'd like to first start off giving our praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai being the name of who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to all the Akim across the four corners of the earth that's pushing this word in truth and in sincerity that are potentially of the elect. I'm going to go into 2nd Edris, the 14th chapter, the 14th verse. I'm going to read all the way through the 16th verse. And the reason I'm uh, going into this, uh, I was, you know, basically woke up earlier today. Uh, I just opened up the scriptures and, and started reading. And this is uh, actually where I opened, uh, I opened up the Apocrypha. Which of course is the scriptures, and uh, this is what what I opened up to, and uh, basically the first thing I read, and I believe you know that was the spirit, because uh, this is definitely, definitely the time that we're in right now. Uh, so I'm a, I'm gonna read it, and this is, this is a, uh, you know, scripture for exhortation. To, to the brothers, you know, you know, and I'm, I'm going to actually go into that word exhort or exhortation. And if you go into to ex, uh, exhort or exhortation is or exhort, I'll just leave it at that. Exhort is uh, to exert, exhort is encourage from old French exora and directly from Latin exorate. Terry, to exhort, uh, encourage, uh, stimulate, uh, exhortation, and then, uh, so basically, that's what it's saying, is to, to encourage, but I looked up the word encourage, and I got it right there. And it's interesting what this word encouraged break down breaks down to and it's actually a uh compound word and uh I just read it says from old French encourage make strong harden from in uh make put in and then uh that's so that's the first part of the compound word in and then cor Plus courage, or courage. Uh, it says courage, and then it says heart. If you look into the word uh, courage, it uh, it tells you basically. If you read on down, it tells you to look at look into the word heart, and it says. Uh, I'm really gonna focus on the word. Soul, spirit, will, desire, uh, mind, intellect, and uh, I pretty much stop right there. So the word exhort basically basically breaks down to uh, encourage, and encourage breaks down to uh, to put in the mind because we know that the heart is not talking about. The heart that actually pumps uh, blood or circulates blood throughout your body, but it's talking about your mind. So it's it's uh, encourage actually is a compound word that means uh, to put in your mind. So that's why I use the word uh, exhort because I wanted to uh, I wanted to I chose that word in particular because I like I said I went and looked it up. And it, and it it breaks down to to put in your mind, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read into the uh, the scripture. It reads, uh, "Let go from more, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature." So you know, brothers, you know, we gotta we gotta uh, apply this right now. You know, I'm speaking to myself, and I'm and I'm uh, speaking 
uh, these words as exhortation to the to the brothers, you know, and especially the younger brothers in this truth as myself and, you know, brothers that's only been in, in this truth for a year, two years, uh, even up to seven, eight years, you know. And, the, you know, basically what the scriptures going into is, is self-explanatory is we are not to be like these <clears throat> these individuals out in the world. And uh, we're not supposed to have this, the mindset that they have, the things that they care for, the things that concern them, the the uh, the problems that they worried about. They those shouldn't be our problems, you know. Because we understand that we have a kingdom coming, and that all this is going to be destroyed, and we also understand that. We're in captivity, we're not free, and that we're going to catch hell, man, you know. we still under the rule of the so-called white man, so basically uh, trials and tribulations come with being in, in this troop, and then we're in captivity, man. So we are not to be uh, worried about the things that the people of the world are worried about. The fears that they that they the things that they scared of afraid of, and then the last part of this verse it says, "Put off now the weak nature, and you know that's that's key, man, because the time is coming where you know you're gonna have a lot of people running to to the prophets for help, you know, and especially your immediate family. And you just might be in a position or in a situation to where, you know, basically it's all about it's all about you, you know. And you're not going to be able to help the wife, help children, you know. Or the Most High can definitely have mercy and uh, and, 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 and he's going to deliver. I say he can have mercy and deliver. uh your family, or he can put them in debt, you know? Brothers that got jobs, you're going to lose jobs, you know? Don't be worried and, 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 and get weak because, you know, you don't know how the next meal is going to come, you know? You don't know how you're going to pay certain bills, you know? If your woman leave you, are you going to fall out the truth and break down, or are you going to put off the weak nature and, and, and continue in this truth, you know. Some of these things have happened to certain men. Some of these things have never happened to brothers in the truth, you know. I'm going to continue reading. It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. So, you know, we in the flesh, you know, uh, um, you're going to have those thoughts go through your head and, and you're going to be in situations, you're feeling sh stressed out, you know. But the scripture is saying, uh, set aside those thoughts that are most heavy onto you. Because each brother has uh, particular things going on in their life uh, versus what another brother has going on in his life that are heavy onto him, that's weighing down on you, you know. We, we're in captivity. The woman's not with you. You you gotta every time you look up, Esau is asking you to pay some fee. You know you probably owe a lot of money to somebody in this captivity. You know you you barely making ends meet. You don't get to be a basically you don't get to be a father to your uh, children really if you really in this truth. You know you know you do what you can. You there but really you're not there because. The state, Esau got uh, your children or your uh, sons and your and your daughters. But I'm gonna continue reading. It says, "And and haste thee to flee from these times." So the the scripture that comes to mind when I read that is uh, that's in Second Peter's the third chapter, where it talks about uh hastening hasting in the day, you know um. Uh, Make sure that is Second Peter the third chapter. 
Right, Second Peter, the third chapter, uh, the twelfth verse. It tells you to uh, hasting for the destruction to come, so that we can be done with these times, done with the burdens of Babylon, done with captivity and all the trials and tribulations you're gonna go through just by being in captivity. Captivity and not uh not even to add being in this in this truth, you know the Most High gonna add an extra set of uh, trials in your life, you know, to to try you. So uh, you know, we supposed to be in the, in the, in the, in the spirit to flee from these times, meaning in this present captivity that we in, for this to be over with. That means we must be looking forward to the destruction to come, and uh, the next verse is, is gonna go into it and gonna gonna go into it. So I'm gonna actually sign out right here. I've been speaking long enough. I feel through the uh, through the spirit. This is uh Second Edges fourteen and sixteen. It says for yet, and this is why the scriptures is telling you to put off the weak nature and to. Put away the mortal thoughts and the burdens of, of man is because what, what I'm about to read, it says, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So anything that's been in the evils that we, we really ain't seen no evils, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble hadn't got here. But, you know, we didn't cause some hell, you know, being in this troop. Brothers, and you know, of course, starting with the apostles, you know, they didn't been through through a lot, but uh, greater greater evils are coming, man. The time of Jacob's trouble, the rest of the plagues that are written in the scriptures, they they coming, man. And uh, basically, you know, ultimately, if you're not of the elect, you know, ain't nothing you can do, man. If you're not of the elect, but you know, do what the scriptures say and uh, rehearse the righteous acts, give diligence, you know, pray, uh, put off the weak nature, man. And, and, and don't be concerned with what you're going through right now, man, because it's going to get worse, a lot worse. And, you know, only only the test of time is going to tell who the men, who the true men of the Lord is. By the ones that stick it out to the very end and the ones that fall off as things get harder. So once again, this was just a video or a lesson so like you, uh, to give exhortation to the brothers uh, to, to put off the weak nature and to, uh, to man up, you know, and... Uh, you know, continue to, to stay strong in the, in the faith. And with that, you know, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Once again, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the Akim across the four corners of the earth that's pushing his word in truth and in sincerity that potentially are of the elect. Shalom.